Good morning. How are you? Today, I'm gonna make a foray into a um, sort of an extra, extra hobby of mine. In addition to pottery, I'm very into, I'm very interested in medieval stuff. So, I've been thinking that it would be cool to have a, an Elizabethan watering can, water sprinkler, I think they're called water sprinklers. Um, so I'm going to try and make one. We'll see uh, how that goes. Basically, it's a piece of pottery that is, it's got a wide flat bottom, it's hollow inside, it's collared into a little, a little sort of nub at the top that you hold on to like this. Um, and you, you submerge it in water and fill it up with water and if you hold on, you hold your thumb over the hole, um, then it'll hold the water in and let, you can let the water with your thumb off and it will let the water run out, kind of sprinkle out. Um, so... I want to try it because I think that'd be cool. Um, I think I want it a little, I'm thinking I want it a little wider than this. So I'm going to cone up and then I'm going to push cone down and I'm going to cone, keep coning down until it's wider. There we go. It's closer. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, it's kind of a bell-shaped piece of, of pottery. So, and it's gonna be really important in making it to keep the rim in so that I can collar in. So I'm actually gonna initially throw this as a cone shaped piece. I, I want it to be very um, very volcano shaped is what I think of it as. So the walls need to be pretty thin. I'm gonna compress that bottom. It's going to have a bunch of holes drilled in it eventually. I still want it to be whole, so I'm still going to compress it. Um, Alright, so there we got that. Then I'm going to pull up and sort of in so I'm going to push in as I get toward the top because I want a bell-shaped thing when I get done. So I want to keep that rim up top fairly narrow so that I can collar it in at the end to um, kind of the width of a... of a... Like a bottle top almost. So. I'm thinking I'm going to trim off this top a little bit here. that rim some more. 
think we want at least one more pull before we start aiming in. <laughs> Let me clean up this inside a little bit. And then we're gonna pull one more. We want it a little taller than that. Before we make, yeah, I think that's about the right height. And then we're gonna gently collar in. Being careful to keep that rim from ruffling up. We don't want it to fold onto itself. So, in order to not have it ruffle, we're gonna sort of gradually collar and then pull in and then collar a little more and then pull in a little more this is almost like making an enclosed form I want to I think push that wall out a little bit before I get too small. Or, yes, before I get the rim too small, I should say. And then I'm going to kind of pull some of that weight up. Got something going on here at the rim that I'm just going to trim off. It's um, kind of got a split rim going on because of the way it's been pulled and I just, I want it pretty flat for this. Then I'm going to pull and then I'm going to collar. Then I'm going to take my Red, trusty red rib, sort of help aim it in. Trim, I'm gonna kind of get rid of the slip and the tra trimming lines, or trimming lines, throwing lines. I, words, it's morning. Words are hard. So then we're gonna pull in. Because that happened, I'm going to rib that wall up there to try and get rid of whatever memory the clay has for f sort of one folding in in that one spot. We don't want that to happen, so we need to immediately address it. And then I'm going to again sort of aim in <laughs> with my with my pulling um, I'm going to start just a little bit lower and kind of pull in some more Ooh, that's getting close now thing is we want this to be small enough in the opening so that I can stick my thumb over it. That's going to take a little doing. <laughs> We're going to have to collar in a lot. Um, I maybe should have gone for, oops, I should have gone for a, for a, my apron. I don't know what I was thinking. I've got water running down my arm. Um, I maybe should have gone for a more narrow, tall piece to begin with, but I didn't. So we're gonna carry on and see how 
see how close we can get. Grab uh, my apron and put it on. Let's let's see. So I'm gonna take my red rib and I'm going to sort of push in with it. continue to collar um, now I'm gonna trim off that I got a tiny bit of ruffle right right there at the top so I'm gonna trim off just a tiny bit before it really folds And then I'm gonna compress that rim and ever so gently try to push it in. Without uh, it's folding again. No, no folding. <laughs> Experimental pottery, it's what happens when you just sort of decide to try something sometimes. It doesn't really work. I guess we'll just keep carrying on and see how close we can get to the right shape. I'm getting close, but that's still a really big hole. Folded. All right, so we're going to cut off again. We're going to trim off the foldy bit because that really is the only option now. And I'm going to pull, I'm going to collar further down. It's going to be get a little smaller essentially. I don't know if this is going to work at all, but we're going to keep trying and see what we get. See how close I can come. Um, oh, that's not bad. Let's see. Keep collaring further. Hey, that's not too bad. It's getting close to ruffling right there at the end, so I'm going to A little bit because what we kind of want is a little knob um, almost at the top with a hole in it so hmm, let's think about this let's collar in a little bit more from here a little bit lower down I think we might have it almost. Let's see. Then, I think what I'm actually going to do is I think I'm going to enclose it completely. So I'm going to put a little bit of water there and I'm going to literally push this whole thing together so that I trap a bunch of air in there. That should allow me to because now because there's air inside of there, I can alter the shape of the piece in ways that I could not prior because now there's air holding it out. So the benefit is I can do stuff like this because the air will hold it where it's at. On the minus side, when you push out in one spot, you push in and you know, it'll. When you push in in one spot, it's going to go out in another. So I want a little knob here at the top that I can oh, aha, that I can drill a hole in at the end. I'm going to try. 
try to see. Then, hmm, I gotta think about this now. Let's see. I want it to be sort of a, a knob that I can hold on to. But I don't have enough clay there to do that. Hmm. I could, and I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I will throw a separate knob and attach it after the fact, and then I can drill a hole down through both of them. But for now, with this, I'm going to trim off this bottom edge because I don't need it. now then I'm gonna but I mean now we're just prettying things up now that we have a plan I'm gonna clean up the outside a little bit here and then I'm gonna take this off my wheel and oopsie wrong way So now we have this bell-shaped item. I need a wide, flat top so that I can grab onto it like this underneath. So I'm going to take this and set it over here. And then I have, oops, oops. Now I'm going to center the tiniest bit of clay that I can to make that knob with. Um, some people would throw it from the hump. I don't know that I want it. Yeah, I may have to. Some people would throw this from the hump. I don't know that I... I don't think that it's that particular and I don't have anything else that I want to throw from the hump. So what I'm going to do is I am going to push in and create essentially a knob that I can, after the fact, apply to my little watering can over there. This is, for me, the kind of pottery that I most love. The looking at a piece and trying to figure out see how to make it. So I often draw sort of ideas. I just draw a picture. And then I try to figure out how can I create that out of pottery. So I'll draw weird assembled teapots and um, interesting shapes and you know what can what can I do with pottery? That's pretty good. That might work. So I think now that I kind of look at it, what I'll end up doing once this is drier, is I'll cut this top off and put this on top of it instead. But I need this to be less squishy before I do that. So, hey, how are you? All right, so here we are with the pieces of our watering sprinkler. I'll call it. 
and some tools that I'm going to use to assemble it. Um, ooh, that worked. All right, so I'm going to put the bat back in because part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a little bit of this top so that I can um, stick that on with it. I need to get rid of this lump here where I closed it. So I also need to drill a hole in this so I have a trusty drill bit that I use for just this purpose. I'm not actually sure how big it is. I've had it for a number of years. It's a pretty big drill bit so I'm going to use that to drill a hole right in the middle of this and I'm going to cut right around that first. So let's cut that first. So I'm going to take, it's pretty solid today, so I should be able to trim it off without any problem. So I'm going to take my pin tool and just trim that off. So now you will see I have a little hole and otherwise a relatively solid piece. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this knob, I guess I'd call it a knob, this um, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut it off the bat. And I'm going to cut that right off the bat. So now I have this little knob that I'm going to put right here. I'm going to stick it on there and then I'm going to uh, then I'm going to drill a hole in it. Well, actually, I think I'm going to drill a hole in it first. Um, so I'm going to take a, a drill bit, this drill bit, and because it's fairly soft, I can just use it as a hand, essentially a hand drill here, and very gently um, drill a hole straight on through this. But otherwise, that's kind of, oh, I didn't get quite in the middle, but. <laughs> okay, so I have this piece, and then I have my little knob that I'm gonna put on here so that I can hold on to it and put my thumb on it, like that. And I'm going to stick this on here. So the first thing to do is to get this part, oopsie, get this part damp, and get this part damp, and then I'm going to score and slip I'm going to sort of mark where it's going to go. Okay, I think I'm going to put it... I want to make a mark so that I get it in the right spot centered on the piece. Alright, so... Then I'm going to score and slip that part. Although it is... Because I kept it, kept it covered, it's reasonably um, damp. And then I'm going to score and slip the bottom of this part. And then I'm going to add more water. Lots and lots of water. And then I'm going to adhere this to this piece. So, I'm going to now, with my wheel on, I'm going to make sure that it is stuck down adequately and in the center. Then I'm going to take this edge, I'm going to take a tool like this, it's kind of got a spade bit looking thing on it, 
and I'm going to gently go around the edge where the where you can see that it's two pieces and I'm going to get rid of that line so that sort of filling in that little edge I'm going to take my finger and smooth out where I drilled the hole, which I'm, I think I'm going to make a little bigger, although I may just leave it a little off center. I'm not, since this is just a um, prototype, I'm not super concerned about it being absolutely perfect. Um, and the off centerness might actually make it easier to put your thumb over it. So I'm not, I'm going to take a pin tool and I'm going to actually take that spade bit on this. It's a two ended pin tool and I'm going to sort of cut off a little rim here at the bottom for the wire tool to go in so that it will definitely stay at the bottom of the piece. And then I'm going to very slowly turn the piece around on the wheel. There we go. So I'm actually going to put it on a new clean dry bat. Let's go ahead and poke some holes here and see how this goes. I'm going to... I'm kind of thinking that I should, hmm, that I, I feel like I should sketch some, like, like put a flower on here or something, something cute, although it is just a prototype, so I don't know. But the original has about 50 holes in the bottom, so a fair number of holes would be fine. So I'm gonna, let's see, let's see if we can figure out kind of where the middle's at. Looks like that's about the middle, so I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle of the middle. And poke it all the way through. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger as I go, using this little tool to sort of enlarge each of the holes like that. So that, in particular, you got to make holes big enough in pottery so they don't um, shrink shut <laughs> when you're firing them. So then I think I will make a kind of a circle around here. So I'm going to do about six cir six. Oops, that one's a little further out than I meant it to be. That's all right. We're gonna make them a little bigger. Looks like the bottom is a little thicker than I was hoping it would be. That happens once in a while. I may have to sort of um, take my little spade tool and um, almost drill out a little bit bigger hole. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the way I'm gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna make you watch me drill 50 little holes, but, and I'm probably not gonna make them quite 50 of them, but, oh, don't stick it in there, don't do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and look at it finished. All right, so I've poked all my holes in here. I decided that I'd make kind of a snowflake shape because I can't help myself but want to make them look a little bit decorative. I'm going to go ahead and sign it um, and then hopefully later we'll see once it comes out of the kiln. We'll have to do a demo of how that worked. <laughs> 